Okay, everybody, in this section, we are going to talk about the importance of connection. That's the second pillar of trauma wise care. And it's also um, one of our three principles in trust based relational intervention or TBRI. We value connection over just about everything because we know that when we are connected, that we generally feel safe and we are able to do um, harder tasks. So there are a few different things within TBRI that we use to develop connection. One of those are uh, within our engagement strategies is behavioral matching. So in behavioral matching, we are simply talking about matching the child's behavior. If they're sitting on the floor, then we might sit on the floor next to them. If you guys are coloring together and they pick a red crayon, then you might pick a red crayon. Um, if you are checking in and being playful and they say, you know, I love dogs, then if you agree, then maybe you love dogs. It might, it's really simple, but it shows them that we are attuned to them, that we are paying attention and that we want to be with them. Um, right now, behavioral matching is so important because if a child is becoming dysregulated, behavioral matching can really calm them down because it shows that we are connected and together. For me, behavioral matching is a place that it's really easy for me to connect because it doesn't require me to do a whole lot of extra things. It's not a hard thing to just sit next to the child the way they're sitting. Maybe if they're sitting with their legs crossed, we sit with our legs crossed. Um, maybe we show interest in the same kind of music as our teens or the same kind of TV shows that they like. So it's really just finding common ground and common interests so that we can um, connect to them in a way that is non-threatening where we're not asking anything of them. I'll give you an example of this. My teenage daughters like music that I don't like. I don't very much care for their music. Um, but when we're in the car, I encourage them to play that music so that I can get to know it a little better. And then they start to open up and connect and I start to enjoy the music too. Um, so finding ways to just behavioral match, show shared interest in, um, and connect to what's important to them in these moments will have great payoff and connection. Voice tone. Okay, another one of our engagement strategies within our co connecting principles is voice tone and how we use our voice. One thing that we need to be aware of is that for those of us that tend to raise our voices to get kids attention, right now that might send them into their downstairs brain. So we need to be really, really aware of our voice tone and how we reach the kids through the tone of our voice. For example, if kids are playing, then we can have a higher voice tone. We can be playful and whimsical and, and meet their need in that way. If a kid is beginning to get dysregulated, we want to be lower and slower. We're gonna offer some choices, right? But we want our voice to bring calm to that situation. If I start to yell, there's a really good chance that I'm gonna send that child into their downstairs brain. Our goal is to keep them in their upstairs brain. Sometimes for me, when I want kids to listen to me when they're not, I think if I yell to get their attention, they'll look and listen. Now what I know is that if I yell to get their attention, I'm potentially causing them to be fearful, which means they aren't able to listen. So. There's a difference in how we gain their attention through our voice tone to get them to hear and see us as we're coaching them through the day. A third engagement strategy is healthy touch. And right now is a time when, when touch can be incredibly important as long as it's safe and it's welcome. So a couple of rules on touch. We would never touch a child without permission. We always ask to touch a child. If a child asks for a hug, then we want to be able to give them a hug. And we know that we calm the stress system through healthy touch. We also need to be aware that our kids have often experienced harmful touch. And if they don't want to be touched, they don't have to. Really easy ways to add in touch are high fives, fist bumps, just a pat on the shoulder, um, for teen girls even, I might see if they want me to brush their hair or 
you know, something like that so that we can connect in that way. It involves healthy touch. The child is giving permission, but it's also not awkward and uncomfortable. Okay, so finding ways to add healthy touch is really important. And let me give you an example of how these three things can come together. Um, one would be with our littles is that if they need something from us or if we need to get their attention, then we're gonna behavioral match by getting down on the ground at their level. We're not gonna stand over them. No, we're gonna behavior match and be down where they are. We're gonna monitor our voice tone for what their needs are. So we might be, hey buddy, how are you? What do you need? Let me see your hands and eyes. And so we might get them to hold our hands and that's that healthy touch, okay? So we bring our voice tone in, we bring our behavior matching in and we bring our healthy touch in. And all that does is calm that stress system down so that they can hear what we're asking of them. So I get down on their level, I say, hey, can I see your hands and eyes? And if they don't look at me, that's okay. They don't have to. These kids are, are hurting and scared. So we're not asking big demands of eye contact or anything like that, but hey buddy, can I see your hands and eyes and get that touch and that gentle voice and that calming uh, behavioral matching so that we can get the kid to go in the direction we want them to go, okay? One of the last things I wanna talk about within our connecting strategies is the idea of being playful and having fun and playing with the kids the times you, you are under are so stressful and play is how our kids learn. Play is how they solve problems in the world. Play is how they develop peer relationships. It is how they develop relationships with you as the adult caregiver. So I wanna give you a couple of little bits of information about play. One, play disarms fear. If a child is truly being playful, they will be in their upstairs brain. When kids are at play, we can teach. We can have fun moments where they're, they're learning, but they're having fun and they don't even know they're learning. It doesn't feel like um, a big strategy to teach them some big concept, right? So we want to play with our kids. But for me as an adult, I don't always know exactly how to play. It's not easy for me. I think about everything we have to get done and play falls way down on the priority list but actually play should be our biggest priority with kids. They need to play as much and, in, and as often as we can make it happen. We should not take away play uh, as a consequence for behavior, okay? They need to keep their playtime. It's really, really important and it helps them to regulate, which we're gonna talk about in our next section. But let me give you some ideas for play and how we engage with the kids because I do want you to have some choices of, of things you can just go and try. So for our little kids, we might do peekaboo. We might just like peekaboo and you know they giggle and they laugh and we're having fun. And then we might use their hands if they wanna do it with us and, and back and forth and we're playing. And that's such a connecting time. Again, we're behavior matching. We're using our, our voice tone in a playful way to connect with the baby and we're getting some healthy touch in, okay? Remember, play disarms fear. We want them in their upstairs brain. Um, there's a high five game and you can play this with any age kid. And so you just hold out one hand or two and the other person is just gonna try to give you a high five and you move your hands around. So with, for the little ones, I might do one hand and just whoop, whoop, whoop and move them around and they get a chance to be playful and try to hit your hand. And then when they get it, you swap and they hold their hand or their hands up and they try to give you a high five as you try to kind of escape it, okay? Um, I think fun question and answer games for our littles are a great way to keep them connected and involved. And you can do this one in a whole group of kids. And, and really, once you teach some of these things, the kids can do them with each other too, across all age groups. Okay. But, you know, let's, who has brown hair? You know, do you see someone with brown hair or a black shirt? Um, and then maybe when you both spy that thing, then you, we might shout connection and move on and ask another question. So does anybody see a, a green shoe? It doesn't matter what the question is. It's just something for them to look for and identify and you do the same thing. And then when you both find it, you yell connection and you go on to the next one. You might do a high five or a fist bump to, to just again, mark that with some healthy touch. 
for our middles. Again, that high five game where you're moving your hands around is a great option. Healthy touch, eye contact. Um, our voice tone is good and we're behavior matching. Um, they can do the IC game. So, um, you know, I see something green and then everybody else has to guess what they see. That's a great way to engage them. You can do that one-on-one -on -one or you can do that with a whole group, okay? Fun handshakes where it might be a high five and a fist bump and you spin around and um, you do different fun things within kind of a handshake and that can fall into your rituals too. So they don't have to be super complicated. They could be like three or four things. Like you'll see kids like do slap, slap and up, down and then they fist bump and that's connecting for that kid and another kid or that kid and a caregiver. Okay, so really fun, creative, um, different handshakes that they can try to put together. Um, and then just fun check-in questions. And you can do these all day long. You could, if, if things are feeling chaotic, you could have everybody stop and, and just circle up and say, okay, we're gonna do a quick check-in question. Um, let's say your favorite sports team. What's everybody's favorite sports team? What's everybody's favorite animal? And why is that your favorite animal? What do you love about that animal? Okay, um, for our bigs, we should try to involve our kids, our big kids, our teenagers, in some of the, the planning of the day. But I wanna make sure you hear, they can't and shouldn't be expected to be the adult caregivers of the little kids, okay? They are in that same trauma, they are in that same space, and they need to make sure that you are the safe caregiver and they are not required to be. However, part of them being a teenager is that we can give them some voice and control into their day. So we might have them help build the schedule for the teenagers. Do you guys wanna have your outside time first or do you wanna have your uh, inside time first? So we give them voice into the day. But again, they should not be responsible for being caregivers to the kids, the little kids. Now, that doesn't mean they can't play with them. Remember, all ages can together do this high five game. All ages can um, do fun check-in questions, okay? So they can absolutely interact and they can absolutely play. And that's what happens in families, but their responsibility should not be to be the primary caregiver for a child, okay? Um, really fun ways to get teens involved are fun check-in questions. So who's your favorite movie star? Who's your favorite rock star? What's your favorite band? What's the best meal you've ever had? And just watch them light up as they talk about these things. And, and then it gives you a glimpse into their world also for further behavior uh, matching. So through these types of games, they don't require any materials and you can just do them back and forth in time in connection, monitoring how you are creating felt safety, how you're connecting and how you're using those engagement strategies of behavior matching, you're watching your voice tone, you're incorporating healthy touch and play.